Hello. Hello, is this our caller? This is your caller. <laughs> this is Krista Lynn. Thank you for putting your question in. I am excited today to get to um, look at both of your charts. So tell me about what's going on with this relationship. Um, is it a past relationship? Present? Give me a give us a little bit it's of a, a. It's a past relationship. It's my ex boyfriend. We were together for five years, and we haven't been together. What is it? 2019. Uh, we haven't been together since. I think our last encounter, or our last stab at this relationship, was. 2015. We've talked on and off since then, but he's completely cut me out of any communication recently, and I don't understand why I keep dreaming about him. I keep getting these weird, you know, I'm a Scorpio man, and he's a Scorpio. So, like, I feel... Like, I know when he's thinking about me, you know? <laughs> yeah, and, and I think that people don't realize a lot of times that, again, I was talking earlier about plutonic relationships. When I look at these two charts together, this was a very plutonic relationship. I was going to, yes, I was going to talk to you about that because this relationship, for the five years that we were together, is very obsessive, lots of jealousy, lots of control. It was actually very toxic, but we did love each other. It was almost like a... A soul connection. Well, you know, what's... Yeah, like reuniting. <laughs> well, you know, you guys will probably notice in your lives, and I would like to see if you guys agree, that we often seem to have very um, patterns in our relationships. We attract a certain person. Um, we keep having the same person come in our lives. And often... There's a reason, because you're trying to work something out that your soul needs to work out. And, you know, each person, you're learning, you're evolving, you're learning the lessons. And often as we grow and, and in our future relationships, they become more successful because we finally learn the lessons that we're supposed to learn in those other relationships. We can finally apply them. Now, yeah, you know, what's so weird is, you know, after I went through my Saturn return, which recently ended, my whole entire life I've been attracted, friends, uh, lovers, all Scorpios, all Scorpios. Yeah. And it's like after the Saturn return, I switched to Taurus. <laughs> to what? <laughs> the Taurus. Right, right. Well, you're opposite. You're opposite. That's interesting. I to see the other side. Right. Right. Well, interestingly enough, in this relationship that I look at, and I'll just give you a, a little bit of a, a few, a few um, thoughts here based on your question, and that is, this is somebody that is in a different generation than you, so it's an older person. Now, last week I talked about Capricorns. Um, you're a Capricorn rising, so it's going to be not uncommon for you to have relationships with older people. Looking at your chart, you're very old soul. You're very connected. And so your relationships will always take on a strong intensity. Also having a son in Leo, there's a lot of emotional, there's control there. Scorpio, Capricorn, Leo, those are all very controlling signs. Yet, you know, control can be turned into something more positive when everybody trusts each other then that passion and control turns into living a life together that instead of controlling each other, you're dreaming up what your dreams are and making them happen. In this relationship here, I'm looking, we have a strong stellum in Sagittarius, Moon, Mercury, Venus, and Sagittarius. So here's someone that you're not going to pin down. You're not going to be able to pin down. Um, Sagittarius can become very aloof, kind of like you're saying, they just kind of disappear also in this chart, we have a Mars and Pisces. Pisces is famous for call, what we call uh, in our day and age ghosting. They just disappear. They just Even if you're standing there talking to them, they can be right across from you and they can literally disappear. They're like, uh, like you're standing next to me, but you're gone. Where are you? Like they can come and like disappear. 
um, tune out of a situation and not even say a word. No, they don't give explanations. They don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. They don't want emotional upset that, you know, Pisces are so sensitive that often before they can even talk about something, they need to go be alone for a while and kind of absorb it. And then often they come back. But often the relationships go through such a hard time because during that time, say here Mars and Pisces, they just disappear and cut you off and it can be very unfair to the other person. Yeah, what's weird is even with Scorpio and Taurus, which I've recently, you know, kind of shifted to, I'm still attracted to Mars and Pisces people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, and I'm looking at your chart. Um, you have Pisces in the third house. Third house is your is your communication, social media, who you like to talk to, what you identify with. So a lot of your friends and there's your relationships have the Neptunian theme. You like, see, the Neptune theme. I have Neptune on my rising. <laughs> yeah, and you have the North Node there. So in Pisces, yeah. you can use, you know, and that's the thing. When you're dealing with relationships, I mean, if it wasn't for the fact that Neptune came down and made us all a little delusional for a minute, right? I mean, that's the best relationships when you just go, I don't know what happened. I just fell right in, you know, yeah, that's love at first it. sight kind of feeling. <laughs> The universe, yeah, so you're going to always have those kind of relationships. And you really get a double whammy because you're going to have Plutonic and Neptunian. You know, you've got, when looking at your chart, I see both themes coming out. Um, yeah. You know, you're more serious, you're more connected, you are more attached to your relationships. Um, you need to be constantly reassured you know, again, nothing wrong with any of those things. It's who we are, and a good relationship is going to give you that. Looking at this other relationship, I see the sun in Scorpio, moon, Mercury, Venus, and Sag, and Mars and Pisces, and Pluto in Libra, okay? Now, again, I'm just, I'm just doing a short answer here. In a reading, I go much deeper into different things. But just looking at the personality profile, here's somebody that is very intense, but at the same time, takes off, disappears, acts aloof, and then comes back like what happened and wants to be all connected again. Often this type of relationship can be um, very emotionally exhausting. You know, somebody who can become, you know, we call them emotional vampires where they just take from you, take oh, from yeah, you, but they're not giving back. Of energy out of me. Mm-hmm.